Mountain, Mini Trout Lake, Twin Lake, Beaver Lake, Cedar River, Three Lake, Forest Lake, Little Lake, Iron River, Alpha, Austin. Hi, this is Jim Islib with MSU Extension, and this is What's Up at Uprec on September 2nd, 2020. Today we'll hear from Station Manager Paul Nas about the fall calving program here at Chatham. Good morning, everyone. My name is Paul Nas. I'm farm manager at the Upper Peninsula Research and Extension Center. Uh, we moved to a fall calving in uh, 2015. Since we do the grass finished beef, uh, by calving in the fall, we can run those calves on the cow for the winter, graze them in the summer, overwinter them again, and then graze them the following summer so they're two years of age when they come off pasture and are finished and ready for slaughter. Uh, just gives us a little bit more time to get a good finish on those calves and get them up to a decent slaughter weight. We calve, start calving the middle of August. Um, for our breeding program, we do a timed AI on everybody. And uh, so they're bred in November and we've been achieving about a 60% conception rate. So right now we're the 2nd of September. We've been calving for about uh, three weeks and we have over 70, almost 80 calves born on 110 cows. So we get a big flush with our AI. We get a big flush of calves early and then the rest kind of tail out because we, we do the AI and then 10 days later we turn the herd bulls in. So anything that doesn't conceive to the AI gets spread by the herd bull and that gets strung out a little bit. Uh, the other thing we did when we went to the fall calving is we went to a 45 day breeding season. So we AI on one day, we turn the bulls in 10 days later and then 45 days from the AI date the bulls are pulled out. And that's just to try and keep our uh, season a little tighter, our calving season a little tighter. And by doing that you get more uniformity to your calves as well. Okay, so when we come out to check the cows, we have a newborn calf. We need to process that calf. We've got this gator set up. I've got a calving box. So when the calf is born, we like to do a birth weight. So we have a scale that we can hang from the tripod. And then we have a sling. And we take this sling and we just slip it under the belly of the calf. We can raise the calf, hook her up to the scale, and then take a take a birth weight. When we got her in the scale we also put our ear tags in. And these are Ritchie tags and we use the tags, they're actually engraved. Um, they're a little bit more expensive but uh, once they're engraved they never fade. You can read the ear tag forever. And then we also put in an EID tag or an R radio frequency ID tag so that we have two forms of identification on every calf in case they lose one or the other. We record the tag ID of the calf, we record the birth date, we record the color because some of them are black and that just gives us an opportunity if we're looking for calf we know what color he is. We record the sex, the birth weight, the dam ID, the udder score, we've been assigning an udder score to cows so we can keep track of who's got better udders. I mean we, we sell three, four cows every year because they have a bad udder. And then a calving ease score. Uh, calving ease one is unassisted. Calving ease a score of five would be a very extremely hard pull, maybe even a cesarean section if they had to have the calf taken that way. And then also the, the RFID number, the last three digits, and then any remarks that we may have. I guess the other the other thing that's kind of neat is when we come out, sometimes those calves are hard to catch and we have this handy dandy little calf catcher with like a shepherd's crook in the end that we can reach down and basically grab the back leg and uh, secure the calf so we can get it weighed and processed. These are um, Red Angus cattle. Even the black ones are Red Angus. About three years ago we started crossbreeding those Red Angus cattle with, an, with Akiyushi cattle which is like a Wagyu type cattle or so they're a high marbling cattle and the reason we did that was to try and improve the, the marbling of our grass finished beef. So um, we just AI to the Akiyushis, we do not use a herd bull so I have good records on AI so we know which calves are Red Angus and which calves are 
Akiyushi cross calves. And uh, the, the Akiyushi calves are red tagged and the red Angus calves are white tagged. The other thing we started to do a few years ago was embryo transfers to get full blood Akiyushi. And so far this year we've had 11 calves born that are full blood Akiyushi. That little calf there, that 007 would be an ET calf, an embryo transfer calf. So the Akiyushis are red as well, but they're really light color red, a, a, a more of a strawberry blonde, if you will. So like I say, we've, we're about two thirds of the way done. We've got about 30 cows left to calve. Um, unfortunately, those cows, because they're bull bred, it's probably going to be another month to five weeks before we're finished calving. Uh, a lot of people ask me what I like about fall calving, what the advantages and disadvantages are. And for me, the thing I like best about the fall calving is that we're actually breeding in November. And uh, not a whole lot else going on in November on a beef farm in the UP. So it gives us time to focus on our breeding program rather than doing it in the summertime where we're trying to make hay and get field work done and all that. However, in the UP in Chatham, when you're breeding in November, you, you can run into some bad weather. And we had a little struggle with that last year, AI and cows in the snowstorms. The other thing I like about it is obviously we're standing here, it's calving season. I don't have a jacket on, the grass is green and uh, it's just really nice. Um, some of the disadvantages I think are, you gotta have a lot of good feed for your cows for the winter because they are, instead of just being dry, they are nursing a calf and trying to raise a calf and some of your younger cows are still trying to grow. So you gotta have really good feed in the fall. Another challenge we have is we do rotational grazing, management intensive grazing, and these cows are moved quite frequently. During the calving season, we only move them about every three days. But when we do move them, they get into tall grass and it can be hard to find the calves. And the other thing we have a challenge with is if a cow's having trouble, and needs assistance in the birthing process, we're quite a ways from our barn and our working facilities and it can be a challenge to get the cow down to where you can actually give her some assistance. But, but uh, we really like the fall calving. That's what's up at Uprec. Hope to see you again next time. Anything you want, we got it right here in the UP.